ok Okay, yeah, well, you'll get exposed to the polymorphism in the tic-tac-toe uh, application also. So let me see here. Uh, let's wait for this. I, I actually had a quick uh, question about the tic-tac-toe-like uh, thing. So it's it uh, might be something... It might be something small, that's why I was, just because like whenever I went to like select a character, I wrote the code for it, but when I go to select a character or a player, if I put in X for like the player, it doesn't take it. It says like the size is incorrect. Yeah, I would have to look at that stuff, sorry. Oh, it's not a problem. Uh, maybe it was just something that I thought maybe it could be something just small I'm missing. Hold on. Why that stuff taking too long? Let me connect my network cable. Because that site's just thinking, and uh, it's never taken this long before. Okay. I don't like to use the Windows computer during the lecture because the compile takes too long. So now this one's taking too long. Our professor did this to me a while ago too. I think if you refresh, it fixes it. Refresh. I thought I did that, but I guess maybe they're having network issues or something. Okay, so um, so polymorphism, right? It's a fancy word for saying that a class can can become many classes, and that in itself is, is an abstract concept. It's kind of difficult to understand that stuff. But um, once you see an example, a uh, small example, then it kind of starts making some sense. And then once we implement it in a real program, right, like, for example, that bank account program that we have, then hopefully after that, then, then you can see, like, the benefit of uh, building software like that. So, uh, what's wrong with this thing? Uh, I want to use code, but I guess I'm going to have to. Let me see here. I guess I don't even think I have the source code downloaded. Uh, let me check.
fall 2021. That's definitely not it. So close folder. That thing's still thinking, so let me go to my GitHub. It's definitely that website because everything else is going smoothly here. So let me see. Uh, yeah, I, don't know. I didn't even download it to my computer. So let me go here, copy, clone. Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure what's wrong with the Git pod today, but it's just there spinning. So we're gonna have to go with slow compile time. So uh, open. I think I can trust myself here. Yeah. Okay, so let me go here and let's open that uh, example we sh we're working on. Maybe I need to. Uh, maybe the recording is consuming a lot of my resources. This one, I guess it was over here in the classes. Why is this showing changes? That was strange, okay. Okay, uh, later. Okay, so yeah, this is what we were working on uh, the last time, right? So we created some classes, and I was just demonstrating how to implement polymorphism, you need virtual functions, which we have already in the base class. So we need virtual. So we need to declare functions virtual, and once we declare them virtual, then that in combination with dynamic memory uh, will help us implement polymorphism. Then we went through this example where I showed you that if we do not use pointers, then the polymorphism doesn't execute properly. So we have to we have to have uh, virtual functions, virtual class functions, and pointers to dynamic memory or to memory and then, then at that time we get the we get the polymorphism. So I did show this example where we create a class on the stack but then I uh, brought up the issue that if we do that and we're working with large a large list then our stacks since it's small will run into memory issues fast so that's why we have to work with dynamic memory and uh, 
we will not work with dynamic memory memory as far as uh, legacy C++ because that's very uh, error prone and troublesome. Instead, we use uh, smart pointers because smart pointers do all the management for us behind the scenes, just like uh, your Python uh, strings and list and dictionaries. You didn't even have to think. And as a matter of fact, you didn't even know that the list is storing data on the heap. And so is a dictionary and so is the strings because in programming one, they just, they're just trying to teach you programming concepts. But here in this class, we have to focus on teaching concepts for programming, but then also memory management techniques, right? So that's why we're going into this pieces here, uh, and these concepts which are difficult to understand. And uh, hopefully, like once we go through more examples today, then it'll become clearer. Okay, so. We do have everything set up right now to implement polymorphism. So we ran this example and I showed you that anytime we have dynamic memory and the virtual functions, then if the derived class overrides a base class function, then the derived classes function executes, right? Savings account did not have a get balance, so then that count get balance executes. Checking account did have the get balance and then we ran the program and we noticed that the checking account uh, derived function or the override executed. And most of the time, like if we're creating derived classes we and we override a function, then we want that derived function to execute. Because usually it builds on the base class function or it just completely overwrites it. So anytime we're working with a checking account instance, we want to work with those uh, class function uh, implementations and not the base class, okay? So having done all this, now we need to go in here and we need to start uh, building out our uh, modification. So let me briefly show you in a UML, high level UML diagram what we're trying to do here, okay? And then we'll code it. So the last time, or I know at least once before I had mentioned that eventually we're gonna have to modify our program to use a customer uh, account and ATM. So we have a the bank account class. So we have the account class. I'm not going to write all the functions. OK, so we have that. And the ATM right now is directly depending on the account class. but. In reality, in the, re in the real world situation, we have uh, ATM. And then we have uh, ATM depends on the customer object. And then we have a, a customer object that depends on account objects. So in our case, we'll make it simple. Every customer will have a savings and every customer will have a checking. Okay. And then the ATM, instead of working directly with accounts, will work with customers. And at least you get exposed to seeing how you can uh, use uh, polymorphism uh, in a program, and then you'll see how we can work with at least three classes in object or in a programming, right? So this is what we want to shoot for here. This is what we currently have. And the example we have right now doesn't implement any of our unique pointers or polymorphism or anything like that. So we're going to have to go there, right? So we have 35 minutes to do that. So I think, I think that may be just enough time.
Well, I'm hoping. Okay, so let me close this and I'll start with a customer class. And uh, usually I don't bring out this example a lot because, well, sometimes I feel it confuses students, but I think you all are on the right path. So I think you all can handle this. Okay, so let's see. Uh, Not this one. Uh, this one. Okay, so let's create our header guards. If not defined a customer header, then define a customer header. And if class customer does not inherit from anything, it's just a standalone class. So customer. And then we have a public, and we will have just one constructor, and we will have a customer ID, I guess the account number. We need to use a string, and that'll be the customer name. And if we use string, then let's make sure that we include string up here. Okay. And we will write the code for the constructor in the CPP. Okay, so for right now, we're just saying, I'll write the code later. And we need to include memory. Because we will be working with a vector. So we need vector also. A vector uh, of unique pointer to account, and we will name it account. Okay, so that's an empty account, so we'll have to add the the accounts, right? And we need to make sure we remember to include bank account. And we, oh, let me see, yeah, we need savings account. And we need checking account. Okay. Okay, so now it knows what our account is. And we also need to work with a uh, customer ID. And with the customer name. Okay. And we need a way to return a unique pointer to account but we want to reference so that we can work with the original copy and we say get account and we request an index from the caller and we simply say return the account at that index value okay excuse me professor yeah can you explain that line that you just wrote again yeah, so, so we want to return a unique pointer to account. And we use the memory operator because we want to work with the original element in this vector, okay? So we say get account, and whoever calls this function has to send us an index. So once we have the index, we will go into the accounts vector and give them a reference to that element. And we do that so that if we modify the balance, it modifies the original balance so that if potentially we were storing it back into our database, we would be updating correctly. Okay, so let's go ahead and include a customer header, and then we say uh, let's write the code for this constructor.
let's make this part of customer and uh, we can go ahead and use an initializer to say that uh, customer ID is equal to that incoming ID and customer name is equal to that incoming end value. Okay, so we use initializers to populate that for us. So now we have uh, the values for ID and customers right from the parameters. And then we have to come in at that code. Here we will create some entries for our vector, right? So just to save time, I will copy this here. Okay, so let me see, get balance from DB. We don't have that. Let me look at how we're getting data into this account. I don't remember, usually I do different stuff. Let me see here. Uh, get account, look at this. Account. Okay, we're not we're not calling any special function. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll we'll pretend that we're getting some data from a database, right? So in the customer class, we'll have a private helper function get balance from DB. I thought I had done that already for bank account, where I was getting a random value. Oh, no, that was the index, right? That was the index. Okay. Yeah, so this class, I mean, this class function, all it does is generate some random value, and then we, we send it into the bank account uh, constructor. So see, all we do here is call rand, and we get a value from 1 to 10,000. Okay, so just to have different balances for all of our accounts. I think I need some includes here. Uh, what were they? I don't remember. Let me get them from here. Uh, stdlib.h. Okay, that's for the rand function. Okay, so, okay, let's briefly review what I just did. So, in the constructor, I add some elements to each customer. Recall I said that all our customers magically have a checking and savings account, right? So then we call get balance from DB and it's gonna generate some random value to initialize our uh, class classes to some random value between one and 10,000, okay? So that way we're at least simulating uh, the real world. Okay, so we have that. Excuse me, professor. So the constructor you defined on the CPP instead of doing it in the header file? Yeah, because we have a lot, it's, it's a busy constructor, right? So usually the rule is that if it's a one statement thing, we do it here, but it's not a one statement cons uh, function or constructor anymore. So then we do it on the CPP. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's that's it for this class. I mean, not, not our class, right, but for that. Hi, goodbye. <laughs> so, okay, so we have this guy here. Uh, I don't think we need any changes here. So this one should be okay. So this all stays the same. And we can close this, and then we jump to our ATM, and that's where we need to make some changes. Okay, so instead of using custom uh, bank account in ATM, now we're going to use customer, right? So we go, uh, let me see, we have accounts, but we don't use accounts. Now we use customer. So let me include customer. So this is customer, we change it to a C, I will change this to 
customers and common value C. Customers doesn't exist, so we have to make it exist, so customers. And we change the type from account to customer. Okay. And instead of account index, we'll say, well, actually, we need we need to keep account, right? So we keep account, but we also need customer index. And we'll assume zero, although we'll probably overwrite it. Okay. So when we scan the card, instead of using that count index, we have to use customer index. And then we choose we choose a customer from from zero to the size of our of our vector list, right? So let's see what we had done here. We had done it for uh, okay. So this one is no longer accounts; it's customer. Okay, so from zero to customer size. Okay, customers, customers, and we're not we're not working with accounts we are working with customers and we are not working with account or well, we are working with account index let me think here how do we well let me fix the account first and then we'll come back and tackle that piece customers okay so if you are wondering what i'm doing right we have a customers list so we go here and uh so we have, uh, I'll just do three, right? So each of those represents a customer, each of those blocks, right? So we have index zero, one, two, the customer's vector. But in there, we have uh, another vector and zero represents, uh, I don't remember which one I created first. Let me look at the code. Um, customer checking. So zero represents checking and one represents saving, right? Saving, so checking, savings, and the same thing over here. So translate this to code and we go back to our code here so where am i hey, um, so if i get a customer uh, customers index then only to then get either uh, checking or savings, right? So let me see, uh, how do we get that piece? Uh, get account, right? Okay, so so right here get account and we eliminate the block okay so customers customer index dot get account deposit remember when we work with pointers we need the arrow operator i know like it's a lot to remember right okay so what just happened here? Okay, so this piece right here, customers, customer index, represents getting. Where is the pointer in that line? So where is the? Why are we having to use the arrow? Because you said we're working with the pointer. Where is the pointer? Where is the pointer? The pointer is in the vector of unique pointers account. Okay, so it's in the get, it's in the get account function. We use the get account function to access the vector. Yes, the vector is the one that holds the pointers. This is a helper function 
to get an element from this list, the accounts list. Okay. So, okay, so let me backtrack here. Uh, okay. So let me go here. So this piece here that's highlighted, customer's customer index, if we go and look at our list, means get this whole block right here, get this whole block, one customer, okay? So we get one customer, and then we say we use get account at uh, account index. So once we say that, then we are choosing either zero or one, right? Checking or savings, okay? So once we get a reference to one of those two elements, then we can call their functions, right? And both of them have deposit, right? So we can call deposit and send them some amount. Okay, so that's what's happening there. Why, why would we want to use an account index as opposed to just taking customer input right there to choose whether it's the checking or savings that we're trying to go into? Let's hold on, okay? We gotta modify this. We still need to go and modify the input for the ATM. So let's take it one step at a time, okay? We'll eventually have to get input from the customer or from the ATM user, but for now, I'm making sure that this code compiles. Okay. So okay, uh, yeah, I was just curious. So then we go here and we're like, okay, so let me... go here and uh, let me think here this statement's gonna be long uh, get account count index get balance okay same same concept here. We get a customer first, and then we get one account, either savings or checking, and then we call get balance, okay? And we have to do the same thing here. So let me... That's how you recording? Yes, it's right here, recording. Okay, so customers get account. at account index uh, withdraw, right? Okay. Okay, so we fix that piece. Let me see what else do we have down here. Uh, that one should be okay. Okay. Uh, maybe here in scan card, we're not working with account index anymore. We are working with customer index, right? So when we simulate scanning the card, we get a random number from zero to the size of the list, and then we choose that as our current customer, okay? Okay. Uh, let's go and look at our ATM header. We have account index, which is initialized to zero, but nowhere in our code, do we change it? So the way it is right now, we will always be working with zero index, which is obviously not what we want. Okay, so let's see what we have here. Run menu, uh, scan card, that chooses a customer, right? Chooses a random uh, customer. Display menu, they'll see make deposit. Make withdraw, uh, display balance, exit, maybe. Before that, we ask them, let me see. Uh, I guess before that, we can ask them, right? Do you want to work uh, with, or how does the ATM do it? Like, do they ask you? I guess it doesn't matter, right? When they ask you, maybe before the minute. Do you want to work with savings or checking? I guess we'll ask them before. So somewhere here, uh, we have to ask, what they wanna work with. And then we need a way to send it into our class, right? Because this is a free function, okay? So, so how do we do that? Uh, okay, let me think here. Display menu, 
handle transaction, uh, make deposit, make withdraw, display balance. Um, let's look at our ATM header. I guess the, the easiest way is to create a public function where we we can set the account. Or maybe no no I don't like that. Maybe here where we scan card we ask after here we ask them. Like cause we scan card and then we can ask them. We can ask them like uh, enter enter one uh, for checking to for savings. And then we say uh, capture input, character input, uh, count index. I guess that'll work, right? And then we don't have to write another function. Okay. So right here, choose this customer and account to work with. There we go. Hmm. Questions so far? No, it's a lot, a lot to digest, right? But it's been recorded. You can go back and watch it again. And well. Can you show where you put? Because um, we're on the ATM CPP. Or I put what? Um, scan card. Is that... Um, uh, what is that? Is that a code for some in somewhere in the ATM, that H? Yeah, I mean... It's part of the ATM class, right? So ATM oh, there it is. Okay. scan card, right? And if we go over here, then it's part of the ATM class. Okay. okay, well, let's do a sanity check here. All this stuff even compile, right? So let's uh, go here, configure projects, and this is going to take a while because Windows... It's slow in compiling C++, that's why I don't like to use it. Okay, so. It's even slow for configuring the project. So. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I wonder if GitPod's working now, because I can upload that code. Let's see. Uh, I'm still thinking. Okay, finish. Let me try to compile, see how long it takes. We'll just start with the library first, because that's the only place I made changes. So in our no main, no test case. So let's see. Let me try to open git pod over here. Oh, it looks like it opened. So 
I'll check in the code and then I'll work on git part. But we're good, so exit code zero, so that's good. Okay. So now we have to go to main. Uh, and let's see. We had a vector of accounts, and then we send that vector of accounts to our ATM, and then our ATM will start working. But we don't need that piece anymore. So, all this has been checked in, right? So I can delete it. So I'm going to delete this. I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to delete all this. This is in a prior check in. So. And then we just have, uh, well, actually, I blew up ATM. I don't want to do that. So, okay, right there. But we need a unique pointer, right? So, unique pointer to accounts. Accounts. Um, memory, unique pointer. Okay, uh, make unique account oh, actually not that, just this piece. Make unique make unique hey wait a minute uh, I'm not working with accounts right I'm working with customers so and this needs to be customers customers A customer um, include so Customer header and then we say our customers dot push back make unique customer. Five of them should be okay. And then we feed that into our ATM, so customers list. And then we run the menu with ATM. Okay, let me look at ATM header. Uh, customer, customers, vector. Oh, just a customer, not, not unique pointer. Oh, so I have to remove This piece. And we remove this one here. I think that should do it. Customer, oh, actually, it needs. Uh, some numbers, right? So let me just get what I used the last time. Um, we need I we need customer ID and name. So I think I have some here. Um, somewhere. Okay, uh, John Doe, Mary Doe, John Hancock, Mary Hancock. Okay, that's good enough. But it needed, it needed the parameters, right? So that's why. And I don't want to type them all out. 
and we don't need this piece here. Say again. Can you explain what the um, um by making these parameters like um what outputs like so you put in one and then John Doe to um, Mary Doe. So when this outputs, what is it supposed to do? When it outputs? Yes. Uh, so if we go back and look at our customer class, we need a ID for customer ID and name for customer name. So I have to provide an ID and a customer name. Otherwise, I won't be able to create a customer class. So that's why I'm doing that. Okay. Okay, let me see here. Okay. So no questions so far. Okay, so we got this to build, so now let's see if we can get main to uh, main to build, right? So build. This one might take a little longer. Okay, so it built, so now let's see if it runs, right? So notice how I, I went uh, step by step in building, right? So uh, let's try our luck. So let's run it. Enter one for checking. Two for savings. Actually, let me see. How did I write that code? Uh, let me backtrack. That's not going to work. Uh, so I need to come back to scan. Uh, so it's C in account index. So they give me the account index and then. I have to deduct one, right? Because users don't 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 work with zero ones like programmers, so then I have to say uh, minus minus. So if they give me one, they really mean zero, and if they give me two, they really mean one. And if uh, you're not following me, if they say one, they mean checking. If they say two, they mean savings, right? So one minus one zero, two minus one one. So we'll get the correct index. Okay. So then I have to do account uh, index minus minus. And then that should work. Okay, so uh, let me build again. Okay, I wasn't too bad. Okay, and let's try to run it. <clears throat> okay, so enter one for checking, two for savings, one, uh, get balance, 73.27, continue. I think it was yes, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh make deposit i think i i automated that piece right so deposit at 78 continue uh yes uh display balance 7405 continue i'm not sure if it's no confirm exit no okay so i guess i need to fix the looping for that piece but let me let me run it one more time okay uh Two for savings, uh, get balance, 8,600, continue, no, yes, right, so confirm makes it, yes. I guess it's the opposite, right, so enter one for checking, two for savings, let me say one, and let me display balance, 1180, okay, so at least our program works, right, that logic for looping 
I need to fix it in the text, but as you can see, if if right you <clears throat> are a novice programmer and are not exposed to to these concepts, polymorphism, how would you tackle this? How would you tackle uh, working with two accounts, right? So maybe here in customer. So let me first let me stop the program. You would ask them enter one for checking, two for savings, right? And then you would probably have an if statement if if zero, then work with checking, else work with savings. But notice nowhere in our logic here do we have anything that uh, is using a conditional structure. Instead, what we are using is we're hiding that if statement with polymorphism, right? So we go back and look at our hierarchy for our class. Uh, classes. So what we are doing instead is uh, we're, we're implying conditional statements, right? So zero savings account, one checking account, and polymorphism behind the scenes is doing some conditional statement to go grab our correct class, right? So uh, that is known as indirection in the industry and is very commonly used. Like these concepts are very commonly used. And uh, one final concept that I want to talk about is abst ab abstract class. So if we go back and look at our diagram, when you go to the bank and you're like, I want to get $100 from my account, and assuming you have more than one account, they'll ask you, or the ATM will ask you, right, uh, from checking or savings, right? So meaning, like, usually you never directly work with account. Uh, you, why? Because that's an abstract concept, but a more uh, generalized form of it is a savings account and checking account. So then we're like, oh, okay, so uh, account should never be allowed to be instantiated. Like, we should never be able to create an instance of account because in the real world that doesn't exist we work with checking we work with savings we work with 401ks mutual funds money market accounts but we not we don't just work with a generic bank account right so recall that object oriented programming uh, means modeling the real world so to model the real world we can use that concept of abstract class and we have everything set up to uh, create an abstract class, which means this class cannot be instantiated. So we go and look at our code here for account. We have a virtual, virtual, virtual. And what we need to do is we need to make one of these functions a pure virtual function. And when one of the virtual functions in a class is pure virtual function, then we will not be able to create an instance of that class. Right now we can create instances of account because none of our virtual functions are pure virtual functions. But we want to make at least one of them a pure virtual function. And the candidate is this one, get balance, right? So what I'll do, I've never gotten the syntax right to write this here. So I'll say, okay, set a function, class function equal to zero, that makes zero, that makes it a pure virtual function. Okay. But I need to make sure that I write the code for this function in the CPP. So I go to bank account. And then up here, I'll say, okay, so. I do not need the keyword virtual over here. I do need to make this part of the account class and then simply say return balance here, okay? So now I go back over here and uh, account is now an abstract class and we cannot create an instance 
of an abstract class and I'll show you that. Let me see why that's red. So we gotta check our code. So let's try to build this. It's building. Another another very popular example when talking about this uh, concept is, uh, let me see here. Uh, okay, so the errors I'm getting is because I'm trying to create an instance of account here, right? So, so now it's telling me like you can't, so invalid abstract return type account, right? So I can't I can't create an instance of account. So we have to change those. But for now, I'm not gonna mess with it. I will just comment this code out. Uh, CPP. And you'll see that those errors will go away, right? So uh, let me, why? Because I, I can't create a, a, a variable anymore. Why? Because it's an abstract class, and in the real world, we nev will never create an instance of account. I mean, we always work with a specialized type of it. So let me try to build now. Waiting for unfinished jobs. Let's see here. Uh, and also here. Okay. So, well, actually, that's good that I got that error, right? So, we go, the issue is in savings account. And I'll explain why, right? So, savings account. So if the base class has a pure virtual function, then that's an abstract class. A derived class, in this case, saving when you say When you say base class, do you mean like the class where it's inheriting its properties from? A parent class, yes. OK. So, so savings account is the child class that derives from the parent class or the base class account, right? Account, by definition, is abstract because we have one pure virtual function. If you derive from an abstract class and you do not overwrite the pure virtual function, then savings account also becomes an abstract class, meaning we cannot create an instance of savings account. So we don't. Want, that's not what we want here. We want to override uh, the uh, parent or the base class function, right? So then we say override, and then we will uh, create the override for that class. So let me make sure I include savings here and I'm not working with checking I'm working with savings and I don't want to mess with that so and here I'll, I'll just make up something I'll say 10 at 10 okay to whatever balance is so now I overwrote the the pure virtual function that is in the parent or the base class account so now I'll try to build again. Build. And notice now I'm able to build successfully. Why? because I overwrote the pure virtual function. So now savings account can, can be used as a regular class. We can create an instance or we can create a variable with it. Okay. Questions with this concept? This, this concept is actually not, not easy to understand. So
crystal clear. Okay, so we'll take a break uh, back at 7.27, and then we'll continue uh, with another example for abstract classes, and then we'll get into pointers for the rest.